friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to bring you episode 8 of my One Set Four Ways series, and I'm going to be using the MFT Wolf Pack stamp set by Birdie Brown. I stamped my images out on Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. And I thought I would color these little guys to look like beagles because that's what they look like to me. So for the lighter parts of their body, I'm using E41 and E42. So I started by laying in the shadows with that E42 and then softening that up with the E41, just doing some light flicking motions. And then it ended up not transitioning into the white areas very well. So I did decide to add in the E40 to kind of bridge that gap. And I am leaving just a few little areas white as well. So I am going to color all of these guys exactly the same. I decided that I would do the main part of their lower body with that uh, buff colored uh, lighter area and also the noses and then I would save the head and ears and the spots and their tails for a darker brown combo. So I have always been a dog person. I've had dogs pretty much since I was a tiny baby um, through every different stage of my life. I've only owned two cats and that's because I am allergic, but um, dogs are just, uh, they've got my heart. I just love them so much. And we've had so many different breeds and mixed breeds. I've had, um, let's see, uh, Cocker Spaniels and Golden Retrievers. And then um, for a short time before my mom left, she raised American Eskimos, the miniature uh, size, and she showed them and bred them. The last dog of my childhood was named Kasha, and uh, I was about 21 years old when she passed away. I was away at school when it happened, unfortunately, um, but my dad was there, and she was about 18 years old, and... I absolutely adored that dog. She was a hard one to get over for me. It took me a while to get another dog after that, but also um, it was because I was in a transition period of my life, getting married and moving abroad, having children, and uh, all the families around us had dogs, but we didn't have one, but they were still in our life, so... I'm moving on to the darker brown areas, and for that I'm going to use E23, E25, and E27. So I'm laying in those shadows areas with the E27 first, and putting down some nice deep shadow, and then I will blend that out with the E25. And I'm going to make sure to really scrub over the edges of that transition area so I don't have any harsh lines. I want my blends to be really nice and smooth since this is a kind of short haired dog. So I want them to be really kind of sleek. So once I have that blended in, I will fill in the rest of that area with the E23. So the next dog that I actually owned was Zadie, who we got at our local shelter. Um, when we had moved back to the States, we'd been back for a few years and then our home was broken into. And so we just really wanted to have a dog, um, not only just for protection, but also companionship, but certainly that played into it. Um, and she was just a wonderful dog. She was a flat-coated retriever. She was all black. And uh, she was about seven years old when we adopted her. So we only had her for a few short years in our life. And she passed away last Christmas. But um, she really blessed us. So, um, and, and after Zadie passed, a few months went by. And then it was, um, you know, time that we were starting to think about a new dog. And... I just felt like if I was ever going to get the dog of my dreams that I'd always wanted, now was the time. And I had just always wanted an Australian Shepherd. And so I definitely wanted a puppy because we wanted to be able to bond from the beginning and take her to obedience classes and train her and everything. And so I made arrangements to get our current dog, Gemma. And oh my goodness, what a blessing she has been too. She is such a joy. Oh my gosh. Um, you just 
you know, these animals, they move into your lives and take over your hearts and you feel like, you know, you could never be the same without them. And she just fits perfectly into our family. She's, um, fits, you know, with my three athletic teenage boys. She just, you know, keeps up with their, uh, you know, energy level. And yet she also loves to cuddle and just chill with us. And, uh, she's just so much fun. Absolute joy to have. So I would love to hear from you guys down in the comment sections, you know, what was your first pet or what's your current pet? You know, I just, I love chatting with people about their animals and their lives. And I'd love to hear from you guys uh, about your experiences. So I cut out most of the coloring of this last dog. My hand was pretty much covering him up for the majority of the time anyway. And then I colored in their bellies using YR000 and YR00, just on the three where it showed. And then I blended the edge of that with the E40 to kind of smooth the transition from that, uh, you know, peachy tone into the lighter brown. And then for their noses, I used E49 and E47. And I left a small sliver at the very tops of their noses white so they would look nice and shiny. Then I'll move on to my accessory images. For the garbage can, I'm going to use C1, C3, and C5. So I'll put some shadow down on the top and bottom band and also on the inside with that C5. And I'm also going to just go over each of those little lines that make up the different sections. And I colored in the handle solid with the C5 as well. And then I'm going to pull out the edge of that with the C3. So that's gonna be my mid-tone. I'm gonna to leave just a sliver of space on the inside for that lightest shade and also just kind of creep into the white area with that C3. And then I will use the C1 as my highlight. So I'm going to fill in any of that white space that still remains. I used E50 to add a tiny bit of color to the uh, crumpled up papers. And then for the pillowcase, I'm going to use B41 B52 and B45. So even though that B52 is a higher number, it's actually a little bit lighter than the B45. So I'm using the B45 as my darkest and then the B52 as my mid-tone. And then the B41 is going to be my highlight. So I'm just accentuating those little creases in the pillow and also the little uh, parts where the fabric has been chewed up and um, just getting softer as I get towards that center area. I'll use C0, C1, and C3 to color in the stuffing. And I'm kind of just dotting on that color to help it look nice and fluffy. So I actually started with the C0 and then blended with the C1. And now I'm going back in with the C3 to add some extra dots in the darkest areas. I used E50, E51, and E53 to color in the cake. And I'm going to start at the bottom with the E53 and blend toward the top with the E51 and finish with the E50. And then I am going to also do some dot detail on this one. I'm gonna add in the E55 for that and just make it look a little bit more of a crumbly texture. And then I'll use BG10 to add just a little bit of shading to the frosting. For the cherry, I'm going to use R20, R22, and R24. I'm also going to use those shades for the little dog's tongue. And then I'm going to do another little dog's collar. So using the R24 as the darkest and then blending out with the R22 and finishing with the R20. And I did have to do a double layer on that collar because that R20 really pushed the darker shades out of the way. So that was real quick and easy to do. And then I just did the cherry like I mentioned. I just used the two darkest shades for that. I also colored one of the tennis balls with this red combo. I wanted to keep my color palette really simple on this card. 
Next I'm switching to some yellows. I'm using Y000, Y11, and Y13. So I'm going to do another one of the collars, and then I'm also going to do the second tennis ball with these shades. The last combo I'm using is BG02, BG05, and BG07, and I'm going to do both of the remaining dog's collars with these shades. So the BG07 is my darkest, and then I'm going to blend that out with the BG05, and I'm going to finish with the BG02. And I just put my shadow down at the bottom for the dog who is low to the ground and then on the back of the head of the one that's scratching himself. I used my black Sakura Jelly Roll pen to brighten up the eyes of the three dogs that have them showing. And then I trimmed these images out with their matching dyes. For my focal panels, I have die cut four pieces of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Circle Stackables, and I'm going to blend on a different color of Distress Ink on the center of each of these. So on the first one, I'm using Squeeze Lemonade, and I just let that fade off on the edges. I'm going to splatter some water on the background, and then I'm also going to splatter a little bit more of that ink. So it just adds a little bit more interest. And then I'll set this aside to dry and move on to panel number two. The second panel, I'm going to use Worn Lipstick. And again, just starting in the center and letting that get softer as it gets towards the edges. And then I'll just repeat all of the steps, splattering with water first, and then some more of that Worn Lipstick. And um, since I'm going to be using, you know, the same kind of colored images, I'm also going to have the same layout for the card fronts. So having these different colored focal panels is going to really help differentiate uh, between these. So for number three, I'm going to use tumbled glass. And that one takes a little bit more to build up the color, but it has such a pretty aqua shade to it. I think this is my favorite color of Distress Oxide ink, um, definitely between this one and the new Speckled Egg, but I think I still like the Tumbled Glass just a little bit more. Panel number four, I'm going to use Mermaid Lagoon, and this time I didn't even bother cleaning up my mat because it's another shade of blue, so it's all good. So this one has a really bright blue that is going to match with that um, blue-green combo that I used on those collars really well. So once I have all of these done, I will let them all dry for a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to go through my pattern papers and uh, choose some prints for my card fronts. So I'm going to choose four different plaids from the Party Plaid Paper Pad, which just came out and I'm going to do a variety of shades. So I've got a pink, a blue and yellow, a yellow, and then I'm going to have one that kind of combines all of those. And then I'm going to go to the Summertime Polka Dots paper pad, and I'm going to choose two colors that will match for two of these backgrounds. So I will cut down each of these polka dot pieces into two strips and then I'll have an extra strip left over for another project. For my sentiments for the front of the card, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. So I'm stamping out four speech bubbles from that same stamp set using Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And then I'm going to stamp out the word woof in two of those speech bubbles and the word rough in the other two, just for a little bit more variety. And then I'm going to save the longer sentiments for the inside of the cards. So I've cut down four card bases and two of them are using Lawn Fawn's Apricot cardstock. And I'm going to stamp on the inside of those ones using Peachy Keen ink. And I'm going to stamp a different sentiment and a different dog on each of these. And then I'm going to move on to my other two card bases. I'm using MFT's Snow Cone cardstock for these and stamping on the inside using Lawn Fawn's Mermaid ink. And I'm only showing two of the insides right now, but I'll show all four at the end of the video. 
So I've kind of laid out my images and figured out which ones I want to go with which background panel. So on this yellow one, I am adding the little dog that is crouching down, and then I will have the trash can turned on its side, and I'm also going to add those three crumpled pieces of paper. I wanted this one to kind of overlap that trash can just a little bit, and I'm adhering those down using the Lawn Fawn glue tube. I just found it easier to dot that glue into place and then set those smaller images right over top. And then I'm also going to add the speech bubble. So for him, he's getting one of the ones that say woof. And then for panel number two, I'm going to adhere the little begging dog onto the uh, lighter blue background. And then I'm going to put the little piece of cake in front of him. Um, so I just love his expression. I think he's so cute. And then I'm going to add a sentiment that says rough. For panel number three, I'm going to use the pink background and I'm going to add this little dog who's looking so sad because she has destroyed her favorite little pillow. So I'm going to add the speech bubble that says woof for her as well since the sentiment on the inside of her card has the word rough in it. So just for more variety. And then for the last focal panel, I'm using the darker blue background. I'm going to add the little dog that is scratching himself and the sentiment that says rough and also the two little tennis balls. So I'll add the right one towards his paw and then I'll use the yellow one more in front. And now I'm ready to assemble my card. I've cut down my pattern papers using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle Stackables for the plaid and then the Stitch Party Banner die to selectively die cut the bottom of the polka dot print. So I'm going to adhere the plaid to cover the entire card front. So I'm just making sure to line that up perfectly with the outside edges of the card base. And then I will put the uh, peach colored fishtail banner down the center of the card. And then I've added foam tape to the back of all of my panels. So on this uh, pink, yellow, and blue one, I added the little dog with the balls. And then for the second card, I'm using the yellow plaid. I'm adhering that to a blue card base and then adding the blue polka dot fishtail banner down the center. And then on this one, I'm going to add the focal panel that has the little dog begging for the birthday cake. And I'm just popping that in the same position on all four cards. And then for card number three, I'm going to go with the blue and yellow plaid, again on the blue card base, and again with the blue fishtail banner going down the center. And on this one, I'm going to add the yellow background that has the little dog that is uh, snooping in the garbage can. And then for card number four, I'm going back to that apricot card base and adding the pink plaid and the uh, kind of salmon colored um, fishtail banner down the center. And then I'll add the sad little dog with her destroyed pillow and just press her down into place. To finish off the cards, I pulled some enamel dots out of my stash in a variety of colors that I thought would match. And I'm going to add five to each card. So I'm adding a large, medium, and small to the top left corner. And then I chose two more sizes for the bottom right. And it kind of varied from card to card. And there is a look at the entire set. So these could definitely be given as a gift for someone to keep in their stash. Or you could also send them out individually if you just wanted to make a whole bunch of cards at once, but have each one be a little bit unique. Um, this would be a great way to do that. So there was a peek at the insides of each of those. 
And that is going to complete the video for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I know that these are quite long, but they just are really labor intensive. So that's why I don't do them that often, but I hope you guys still enjoy it when I do. If you'd like to see more of this series, please just give the video a thumbs up so that I know that you like it and you can subscribe and ring that notification bell. I post new videos every Monday and Friday. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.